GameMaker Studio 2 comes equipped with its own image editor, and the way to access it requires a sprite. So let's create a new sprite. I'll click Create here, and I get my sprite editor here. And if I click this button, Edit Image, I can open up the image editor. There's a lot to look at here, so let's break it down. At the top, we have our frame view. This will show all of your frames in a sort of slideshow fashion. This is the current one I have selected, I can tell because of this green underline. If I want to add a new frame, I click this giant plus button and I get a new frame. I don't actually get to select it by default, I have to click on it myself. So if I click this X button to delete one of my frames, and let's just say I draw something, and I click add new frame, I don't actually jump to it, I have to click on it to get to it. But now I have two frames. And if I want to start drawing in my second frame, I can do that if I want to. Or if I need to reference the previous frame, I can click this button for onion skinning. When I click it, I'm going to get to these red braces around here. And what happens is I can drag them to select however many frames before the current selected frame and how many frames after the currently selected frame I want to reference. Right now I only have the one previous frame, so we can not reference it or reference it. And it's going to be red. There are ways to change the opacity or the alpha channel and the color of the selected frames. I'll show you that later. But now I have a reference point. So I can start drawing my own thing over top of this. I don't know, something like that. I can create another frame, click over. I'm now referencing the previous frame. Just go on top of this again, get a new frame, click like that and we'll just draw on top of that again. Now if I want to reference more frames, I just slide it over. Now I've got more frames to reference and they lower in opacity the further back in time they are. And if I select something in the middle, I can also, let's just select something in the middle, select upcoming frames and see what those look like. I can also turn off onion skinning if it gets annoying. So we've also got a few other buttons over here. One is the play button. We get to watch the animation take place. There it is, it's kind of this cool squiggly animation. Now if I don't like this particular speed, this bar right here, if it's not available, it's because it's this little right arrow and you click it to drop it down. We can check the speed, and there are two different speed settings in GameMaker Studio 2. We've got frames per second and frames per game frame. This requires you to have some sort of game frame set up. Um, it, defaults to 30, you can set it to whatever you want, 30 or 60. I prefer frames per second when checking my animation, so this is 15 frames per second. Uh, let's just make it 5 frames per second and hit the enter button. Now it's a little easier to see what's going on. Then we see which frame we're on currently. You see it just going through, what it's doing is starting at 1, going to the maximum number of frames, and looping. If I don't want to loop, I can click it again and get ping pong. This means it'll go to the last frame and bounce back to the first frame and just keep going back and forth like that. And then I can also say no loop, which means every time I hit play, it'll go from one to four and stop. There's a little bar on this side, which controls your grid options. If I click this button, I get a grid. And if I don't like what it looks like, I can click this drop down arrow and change the grid options. I can change the color of the grid from these predefined buttons right here. Uh, let's just put it at black, that's fine. We could set the alpha, which is the opacity, uh, 255 being fully opaque, and I can drop it all the way down to zero, which is equivalent to just turning the grid off. Uh, but you can change the transparency here, it's called alpha. We can decide how many units in pixels are on the X axis and how many on the Y. Right now it's 16 by 16, uh, but we can change that to whatever we want, eight by eight, one by one. It does also, also doesn't have to be symmetrical like that. It can be off and we can make rectangles instead of perfect squares. Now I can still draw on this, but if I wanted to snap to grid, I can just hit this toggle right here. And now I can only draw to the top left coordinate of the grid, which looks really weird and might not be what you want, or at least not at uh, one to five. If it was, let's say four of four, maybe you wanted to create a pattern like that. Either way, these are your grid options. I'm going to turn the grid off now. Over here we've got some magnification options. You can zoom out from your image, zoom into your image. This will put it at a one-to-one -one ratio. 
So that's what it will actually look like to my screen. Down here uh, is the position of my tool in the X and Y value. This is the size of the canvas in pixels, 64 by 64. And this is what 64 by 64 looks like in a 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution. But if I want to set it to fill the screen, I can click this button here and center fit. Now it's back to what it was when I first started. The last option allows you to do split screen. Right now I'm looking at one editor canvas. I can click here and get two canvases, top and bottom. If I click again, I get side by side. Or you can just select from here, split horizontal or split vertical. Uh, it's the same frame on the left and right, but the difference is you now have two toolbars. So I can zoom into this one to get really fine detail and still get this zoomed out look. So I can find the pixel I want to edit, and then I can see over here it updating if that's something that interests you. But I'm just going to keep it at one canvas for now. At the top left we've got brushes. I've got some square ones and some circular ones. They're just some presets. Uh, right now it's one pixel as a square. I can up that with squares or circles. It's just a jumping off point for you to start a brush if you want. And as I select these different brushes, uh, I can change the options up here. I can set the size, so right now it's one pixel. I can put it up to 48 by 48, which is very large and unnecessary at the moment. I can also click this smoothing option, which interpolates and blends out, uh, which of course to a square looks really dumb, but uh, if it were something like a small circle, there we go, we get kind of this anti-aliasing look and uh, it looks a little nicer. Or you can keep it hard pixels if your game is more based on pixels. Here we have our color window. These are a whole bunch of preset colors uh, that are considered like a palette. Um, the reason it's considered a palette, I'll get into in a moment. But if I wanted to change uh, my draw tool that I've got selected right now, this is my paintbrush tool. I can just click one of these colors. Let's go with this color right here. And now I have assigned it to my left click. Over here you can see it. Uh, I can also right click the color to assign it to right click. So you're allowed two different colors denoted here on the left and right. You can add it to left click or right click. I don't want those on there right now, so I'm gonna just control Z and get rid of them. This is your most recently used color, so every time I click something, it'll just show up here. It's kind of handy to be like, oh, what was that last color I used? It's right here. So it's just going chronologically over to the right. So most recent to least recent. Now I can change these colors if I want. I can, of course, click on one of these boxes and get this color window. I can assign the red, green, and blue values right here just with the uh, slider. I can uh, pick whatever color I want like that. I can set the alpha channel right here, the opacity. Or if I want to use hue, saturation, and value, I've got that option as well. Also, there is a hex editor if you know how to use hex code for color. These are all available for you for changing your color. You can also pick one of these basic colors. We've got our grayscale right here and some simple primary colors. And if you make a new color that you think is pretty cool, you can hit save new color and it'll add it to a custom palette down here. So this is the color we started with and this is the color that we're going to get. And if I hit OK, this is our new color. Now I can also change one of these colors in the palette. All I gotta do is double click. So this yellow, I'm gonna double click it and let's just make it this disgusting brown. <laughs> and there we go, we now have this dark brown in the palette. Now, why does this matter? Well, if I had more than one sprite, let's add an existing sprite. This is Pitfall Harry from Super Pitfall for NES. Now, if I go into his image editor. He has the default palette again, so that yellow that I turned to a disgusting brown is still yellow. Now what I can do is, let's say I'm working with this version of Harry and I set up all my colors the way I like them, and now I want to go back to this sprite and I want the colors I've changed in this one. Well, this drop down right here I can use to import colors from a sprite or copy colors from a sprite. So let's say I wanted that yellow back, I can import from Pitfall Harry, and there we go. This would change all of the colors here to whatever is in Pitfall Harry's palette. Really great if you set all these colors to what you like, you draw your sprite, and then you want to start a new sprite. Well, that's going to go back to default, but you can always import the colors you've changed and then continue working. Now, of course, this is only covering the draw tool. There are many other tools we can go over, and they're down here in the toolbox.
The first tool is obviously the paintbrush tool. We've been using it. It's got this pencil icon and all you do is either hold down left click or right click to draw the uh, appropriate colors that you have assigned to left and right click. The next one is the eraser tool. It works very similar to the draw tool uh, except you're erasing stuff. Pretty simple. Uh, and you can also change the brush size for it. And up here you can also change the size by a digital value and you can smooth it if you want to you know, get the uh, interpolation on the edges for that anti-alias feel. Uh, let's just go back and put it back to where it was. And now we have this giant brush, I don't like that. Okay, set it back to the way it was. The next tool we have is a fill tool. If I click that, I will be able to left or right click to fill that color uh, up into some sort of alpha tolerance. Um, I have it set to zero, that's a harsh alpha, so wherever it finds uh, any kind of pixel, it'll stop filling. If I were drawing a lower opacity value, let's just edit one of these to have uh, a low opacity and then draw this box. So now it's really faded, can't really see it, and I want to fill in a different color. My alpha tolerance is zero, so as long as there's any alpha there, it will butt up against it and fill to its completion. However, if I say, okay, it has to be 100% fill, there has to be some pixel there. This is fine because this is still a full opaque white, but if I try to fill this purple, it bleeds through it because I said ignore anything below 100% <laughs> opacity. So that's how your tolerance works. So this is just setting how tolerant it is to alpha channels. And um, we don't want this, let's just get rid of that. Okay, so the next thing we've got is the color removal tool. It's really simple. All you gotta do is click on a color. Uh, let's put multiple colors in here. So we've got a whole swath of stuff. Okay, and actually let's make them blend on top of each other. Okay, so I've got this color removal tool, which is H. And if I click a color, anywhere that color exists, it'll get rid of it. Once again, you can go by tolerance. So if it's close to it, um, this is being very specific, so uh, anything that is this color is, is going to get rid of it, but if I had things that are close to this color, I might have to increase the tolerance to allow it to get the stuff similar to this color. Um, if I click this green down here, it gets rid of all these greens and leaves these gaps in between the purple, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you didn't want to just remove the color and you wanted to replace it, V, or clicking right here, is the color replace tool. So if I select, let's say, this dark blue, and I'm like, okay, click on white. Anywhere there's white in this image will now be blue when I click on it, or yellow, or whatever, the color I have selected in left and right click. Quick way to um, draw your sprite, and then like, let's go into Pitfall Harry, for example. Oh, I don't like his blue helmet. No problem, color replace tool, uh, everything is now yellow. Now he's a yellow version of Pitfall Harry, and it's only on this particular frame. So really nice, fast way to change one color <laughs> in your sprite. The next tool is the line tool or L and pretty simply you just click somewhere, click and drag to uh, another point and release. You've now drawn a line. Um, if you hold down the shift key it'll be locked to 45 degree angles so we've got this as 0, 45, 90 and so forth. Uh, if you're not using shift you can just go in any direction you want and you get a bunch of lines. The next row, we've got shape tools. We've got squares, circles, and well, more specifically rectangle, because it doesn't have to be a square. And then uh, the polygon tool, denoted as a triangle. Now, these actually have two places to click, the top left and the bottom right. The top left defaults to a stroke version. So what it's doing is drawing a square or a rectangle, and it's only doing the outline. It's not doing the fill. If I click the bottom right, it'll be doing just the fill. And if I hold shift and click both, I'm now getting both tools. So that is the stroke, which will be whatever your left click is, or I guess whichever one you're holding down will be, if I'm holding down left click, left click will be the outside and my right click will be the fill. Alternatively, if I'm holding down right click to draw the rectangle, the right click color will be the stroke and the left click color will be the fill. Now, of course, if that's too weird to do, you can always just select up here, stroke, fill, or both, whatever you need to do. And of course I can change the size up here and I have smooth on, of course I'm getting this anti-alias kind of interpolation, I don't want that. Uh, 
this would draw a really big square. <laughs> the stroke is ridiculous right now, so if I just made it something a little more manageable, like three, then we've got a, there we go, my stroke is now three pixels uh, in, in width, and then it's filling the inside. And I just made a big mess of this, so uh, I'm just going to delete it and start a completely fresh frame. So this also works with circles, the same way. You can do your, there we go, your stroke, two colors, you can do your fill, and you can do both. And the polygon tool is very similar. The only difference is you're clicking to create points, and then it's just drawing lines to the points you click on. So let's say here, 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 there we go. And then let's add another point. So it's just drawing a polygon based on these uh, vectors. Pretty simple stuff. Now, one more thing to understand about the shape tools is you can do some key commands with it. So let's draw a rectangle here. And what we can do is draw it at any ratio we want. Pretty nice. But if we want to constrain the proportions, we can hold down the Alt key. And this will expand from the center of the object rather than uh, where I clicked, which will become the top left. So I can expand from center. And if I want to constrain proportions, as I mentioned, I'll hold down Shift. And Shift will constrain the proportions. So let's do both. And I'll expand from center and it'll be perfectly one-to-one, -one, so that means the width and height will be the exact same uh, length. But you can always draw any way you want. This will work for any of the shapes, so any way I want it, from center, and then that's Alt, and then holding down Shift will constrain proportions. This will also be denoted down here for any tool. Click and drag to draw an ellipse. Shift for a circle. So if I went to square, this will tell you that I'm just going to draw a rectangle, but if I'm holding down shift, it'll be a perfect square. And the polygon tool just says enter to commit. So once I've drawn my shape and I'm done and happy, I can just hit enter and I've got my shape. But I don't want any of this. Let's just delete it and move on to the next tool, which is the spline tool or arc tool, which is the A key. Uh, similar to the line tool or, or polygon tool, what you're doing is clicking down in a point, and then it's green to show that we are on that point, and then you can draw out these two kind of levers to create a uh, Bezier curve. So like that, we can create curves, or a spline, or an arc, or whatever terminology you want to use. And that's your way of getting um, whatever curvy kind of look you need. And then you can hit enter to commit your changes, and there you go, you've, you've drawn an arc. Then we've got our text editor. Um, by the way, all of the tools will always appear up here if you need any uh, extra controls. You've got your iterations and size for the spline. For text, this is the most important up here because you want to pick your typeface or font. Uh, I don't know what to pick. doesn't really matter. Let's go with arrow. And then I've got all the different uh, typeface options, the styles like bold, italic, light, semi-bold, whatever, the point size, and whether or not it should be anti-aliased, which is like interpolated like I mentioned before. Uh, keep in mind you have to set these settings before you click where you want to type, because if I start typing and then I click up here to change it off of anti-alias, you'll see that it committed these changes and my cursor is gone. So if I click again, I gotta, I gotta reset everything and click again. Um, so it's changing this, but then I can't keep typing. If I try to type, it'll just tell me to commit the changes. So it's unfortunate that once you start messing with with uh, any of these options, it kind of solidifies what you've typed. But still, nice way to just get some type in here. And then of course, uh, left and right click are the colors you're going to apply to it. So if I right click in, I'm using my right click color. If I left click in, then I'm using, whoops, my left click color. So our next row is the color picker tool. So if I have some sort of color, and then another color, and another color, and let's just pick two colors that are not on the board here on my canvas. Uh, if I want to take these colors again, really simply click the eyedropper tool or color picker, which is O, and then just click either left or right, and you'll just suck it up into your left and right click. Really simple. The next one is really important. It's your rectangular selection tool, or S. Click that or press S, and then just select an area. 
and then you can do stuff with it. Uh, you can move your selection, you can delete your selection. Uh, if you're done, you can hit escape. Um, you can also do some things down here. Control to add to selection, Alt to subtract from selection. So in this case, um, my selection is done, but if I wanted to add some more stuff, I can hold down Control, and there we go, add more to the region, or hold Alt and remove from the region. Now, this might be a little too blocky for you, a little too big, which is fine. I'll hit Escape, that's the button to cancel your selection. I can go on to the Paint Selection tool. This paints using a brush. So if you don't want to use a giant uh, rectangle, you can just just go like this and start painting just the areas you want. Once again, if I just click somewhere else, it deletes that selection, starts a new one. But if I want to add more, I hold Control, I add more to my selection. Uh, if I don't want this stuff, hold Alt, and just click where I don't want stuff. And there. So now I've selected just this, and once again, I can move it somewhere. Um, I can copy and paste. The most interesting part about copying and pasting is copying turns it into a brush. So now I've got this as a brush. I can now paint it on things or post it on things, whatever I'm, I want to do. Uh, if I try to paste it, it just creates a new brush. Now I didn't go over these custom brushes uh, before, but I will now. You can hit the delete key when they're selected and get rid of your custom brushes, and this is where they appear. Now the cool thing is um, you should be able to go somewhere else, like another sprite, or even to an external program outside of GameMaker, make your selection, copy it as a brush, and now I can go to my other sprite, and I still have it as a brush. So I can paste that in here. Uh, there are two different sizes, that's canvas sizes, this is 32 by 32, and this one's 64 by 64, which is why they're different sizes. But there we go, I can paint and make this really disgusting mess. <laughs> I'm just going to make a new frame again, and then if I don't like this brush, I don't want it here, I can just hit the delete key and get rid of it. And the next one is the magic wand tool. For that we need a whole bunch of colors, so let's go to the fill tool, we'll fill that. Then we'll go to all our draw tool. Actually, let's make this a bigger brush. Okay, and then uh, let's lower the opacity to it and paint somewhere else. So we got the kind of this blend between the two colors. Now the reason I wanted to do that is if I go to magic wand, this will select whatever color you click on in, in your um, canvas. So if I click here, it's going to select this color. It didn't select in here because it's not exactly the same color. It's close, but not the same. So for that, I can just increase the tolerance and be like, okay, be more accepting of the things I clicked on. So you see, I get to a certain point where the selection will actually bleed into this. Let's just start increasing. There it is. At there we go, 12. Now it's selected that. So if you have very similar colors and you want to select more than just one harsh value, just increase the tolerance. For instance, if I increase this a lot, I'll get the blue as well. You probably saw that when I was... There we go, now I got the blue. So yeah, it, it will just increase uh, your selection availability by increasing the tolerance. But if I just want one harsh color, just zero is fine. Uh, I can also select color only. I believe this has to do with uh, alphas. And then uh, your contiguous mode. So. This one is always fun. Let's say, let's pick up this color into my left click. Let's paint it, boop, inside the blue. Now, if I use magic wand over here, contiguous mode will just look pixel to pixel, whatever's next to it, it's nearby. Uh, so it didn't select this color, even though it is the exact same color. And for that, if you want to select every single color that looks like that, turn off contiguous mode. There we go, now we've got this selected. Although. Maybe to you that's the same as just using the color deletion or color replace tool, if that's what you're trying to do. Uh, but if not, you can use it this way and then do all of your transform, like move it around. Um, and that is that tool. Now our final row, we've got some ways of altering brushes. So we can rotate the currently selected brush. Now for that, I've, I've just got the regular brush. That's not very interesting. But if we go back to Harry, and let's select him and hit Control C to create a brush of him and go back. Now what we can do is um, rotate him with this rotate one. So what it does is it takes the brush, puts it in here, 
And now I can start rotating by clicking and dragging left or right. And of course, you get all this jagged anti-alias look. This is the interpolation. Um, if I turn that off, it'll be a really disgusting hard look. But if you're making a pixel perfect game, that might be what you need. Of course, you can digitally enter the values up here. If I knew I only wanted a 90 degree rotation, I can do that. And what this will do is create a new brush here with your new rotation settings. So now I can select whether or not I want to draw the upright version or I want to draw the rotated version. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, the next thing is flipping the brush. So if I've got this version and I just want to flip them, there we go, now he's upside down, or I can flip them horizontally. So you got your vertical and horizontal flip for your brushes. This works for the default brushes, but they're not as interesting. And then you've got your pan image tool. This just grabs your image and moves it around the canvas. Now, of course, if you wanted to just move your canvas around, you can just hold down middle click or mouse button three, and that'll drag the entire canvas around. Let's just center that back in frame. But this one will actually move your selection around. Pretty simple tools at the bottom row. Now, the most interesting part about Game Maker Studio 2 over Game Maker Studio 1 is we now have layers. And with layers, we uh, can do some non-destructive editing, which is great. So every time I draw, I'm not drawing on top of uh, my image here. I get to draw something new. So I create a new layer. This one's on top of the previous layer. Actually, let's just start fresh. This, to me, looks really ugly. I used Control A to select all, and then I hit Delete to delete everything. So, on my bottom layer here, which if I want to rename, I can double click and name it something else. So I can just call this like, say, background. You can also change the opacity here in the blend mode, which is really nice. An additive, subtractive, or multiply blend mode uh, to make it more bright, or we can make it dark. Or multiply, really good for shadows. It creates a nice blend between dark and lights. This makes it kind of like bright, it brightens up things, makes them more to white. This makes things more on a darker area or removes uh, the color, the hue from one to another. You'll see it, just play around with it yourself. Uh, but I named it background and for that, let's just uh, fill. There we go. And now if I go to my new layer, layer two, and I start drawing, uh, let's pick a different brush. So I can draw something on top and these are now two different layers. So I can use these eyeballs to shy my layers to see just the one I'm working on and I can lock them. This prevents me from editing this layer and I get a warning, I'm not allowed to do that. So I'll just unlock it. But the cool thing is it's now uh, non-destructive. I didn't change my background. So if I'm drawing something, oh, I don't like it. I don't have to worry about my background. It's still there, it's still intact, it's nice. So you can just keep adding more layers on top. You can also group them together with a nice group. You just drag them inside and now that they're in this group, I can hit this to expand and collapse. We can hit the X button to delete any layers. Very simple. And yeah, I can't delete the group because it's my only layer in there, so I have to drag it out. You'll get this small gray instead of the big gray rectangle, and there we go. Just delete that group. And we're back down to the background. The last thing to talk about is anytime you're in the image editor, you get more drop-down menus. If I were in my workspace, I wouldn't get them, but if I go into this image editor, I can get them. And you get image, view, and effects. Now, I'm gonna do this in reverse because it becomes more complex as I go toward image. Effects just has a grayscale option. It just makes things black and white. Uh, it's not that interesting. You have your intensity. Uh, where do you want to apply it to? The selected layers, all the visible layers, all the layers. You can just toggle your preview and apply it. Nothing fancy like Game Maker Studio One. It just has grayscale for effects. So that's simple and out of the way. Now view is just kind of like these options right here. Um, we can go one to one. So that's like hitting this button right here. So this is exactly pixel perfect to my resolution. Uh, I can fit to screen, same as this. The cool thing is you get to know what the uh, hotkeys are. You can also toggle grid from here, same as that. And you can also change your onion skin settings, yay. Uh, we can select how many frames forward to look, zero is what I'm looking at right now. I can always drag it forward or I can just increase. And how many frames back I wanna look. This is the opacity of the onion skinning. This is 50 and they decrease as they get further away from the currently selected frame. So I can set that to something else or manually type in a number. And then you can just have the color 
you want to have represent the onion skinning. Uh, whatever is good for you. Uh, red is decent. Uh, I can use black. There we go. Uh, whatever you want, really. Nothing fancy. Uh, red is probably the best for me at the moment, so I will keep it and just close that. The last drop-down menu option is Image, and this gives you a bunch of ways to manipulate the image you have currently selected. Let me just turn off Onion Skin. So I can cut the frame, I can copy the frame, and paste the frame. So this has to do with your frame view right here. Uh, I have this one selected. I can cut it. I can paste it. I can also grab and drag it somewhere else which is nice, you can reorder your frames. You can also uh, control click multiple frames and then they're all linked together so I can delete all of them or move all of them somewhere or whatever I need to do. The next one is select all. This selects all the pixels in your canvas. Pretty simple, control A. You can cancel your selection. There's no hotkey, but escape does work. If you hit escape, it'll cancel your selection. You can also invert your selection. So if I select this area and then invert, all I'm doing is now selecting the parts I didn't select, uh, otherwise known as inverting the selection. I can add new frames or insert frames. Kind of sounds like the same thing, but it's a little different. Uh, adding a frame puts a new one on the end. This is done with Shift A if you want a hotkey, also with this button here. Insert frame will add a new frame after the one you currently have selected. So it's inserting it between the current one and the next one. But we can just get rid of those. We can also delete the selected frame. Deleting the selected frame, you can just hit the delete key, you can hit the X button, or delete the selected frame from here. Always multiple ways to do things. The next one is uh, pretty cool, this next section. We can import images, Control shift a or just import. Here you can select from somewhere on your computer to um, import some other image you already have. So let's grab this one of Pitfall Harry. Now, what's interesting about this one is Pitfall Harry is not the same size. This canvas is 64 by 64. Pitfall Harry's canvas is 32 by 32. So we have some options. We can resize the imported image to canvas size. This will expand uh, his size to fit 64 by 64, effectively doubling his size. Or we can resize our current canvas uh, to the imported one. So if I said this, uh, my canvas will shrink down to the 32 by 32, or I'm saying, okay, we'll increase it to this one. So it just depends on which way you want to do it. We can also decide how we want it to contract or expand uh, to the center of the canvas, toward the top left, towards the bottom right, however you want to do it. So let's just say center. So this will expand or contract to the center, and we can also scale it or we can crop it, just depends. So this was cropping, this was scaling, and then we get our interpolation. We can have no interpolation, this makes it pixel perfect, or we can use linear interpolation, this adds a little bit of anti-aliasing as things scale. So let's see what that looks like. Let's uh, resize the imported image to the canvas. This will make uh, Pitfall Harry bigger. And there we go. And he looks like a blurry mess because he's being interpolated. I can do Control Z to undo that. Uh, let's see what the other ones would do. So let's pick the same one again, except this time, let's have no interpolation. Nice, hard pixels, he's just twice the size. Mwah, beautiful. Let's delete that and try another one. And let's resize the canvas now instead. So now, this got all messed up because it got shrunk down to 32 by 32 to meet the canvas size of the newly imported image. But we can undo that. Uh, there we go, set it back to 64 by 64. So those are some nice options. We can also convert to frames. This is one of my favorite options that is available. Um, let's say, let's add a new frame that, and we'll turn on the grid, and we'll make our grid 32 by 32, splitting into four individual cells. And let's draw something. So let's draw a red circle, this red square, yes, they're ugly, and this sort of star asterisk symbol. And now, let's convert to frames. So this allows me to treat this as a sprite sheet and turn them into frames. So number of frames, I've got four frames here. Number per row, I've got two per row. And how big are they? Well, I made it 32 by 32. So this is four frames, two per row, and 32 by 32 is the cell size. I don't need any kind of offset or anything like that. And if I convert, 
Uh, importing sprite images will replace the existing sprite frames. Yeah, sure, let's give this a shot. So, what I did was cut up all of those sections into a new sprite strip and then disseminate them amongst, just distribute them, which is really nice. That's probably one of my favorite options that you could have. Um, I can hit undo, which is fine. So yeah, you can draw your own sprite sheet or import a sprite sheet into here and cut them up. But you can also just import a sprite, uh, a strip image and do it that way. I don't have any strips right now, uh, but if I did, it'd be the same process. I would just be selecting how many images are there, how many frames, how many per row, how big the uh, frames are, and then import. So same thing, but coming from an outside source. Then we can export to PNG. This is really nice. This will export your film strip as its own strip. So if I put it in here, let's just export that. And now if I wanted to import that strip back in, there it is. And we can do the same thing. I can say there are three, uh, there's uh, three per row and they are 64 by 64 with no offsets or anything. Convert. Yes, it will overwrite my current frames. I'm okay with that because it'll look identical. So yeah, you can export to a film strip. This is really good if you got to send it to someone else uh, to work in another program or uh, another game maker. We can resize all of the frames. Um, this is similar to the one outside here. Let's just close that, which is this. Same thing. We're just resizing. Uh, there it is. So yeah, we can either scale it or resize the canvas, change our interpolation, all very simple scaling options that we've gone through. Um, we can also crop all frames to the selection. I don't have a selection right now, but if I did, I can now crop to this. This will turn the canvas size into wherever the selection is. So yes, crop everything to that. Um, there. Then we've got uh, reverse frames. Pretty simple, it just reverses the animation. So it flips the order of your frames. Nothing special there. And the very last thing you can do is you can mirror flip, well, mirror or flip the current frame or all the frames, and you can rotate all of the frames. You can't rotate a single frame for some reason, uh, but if you want to rotate all of them, you can do that, either counterclockwise or clockwise by 90 degrees. And that is everything inside of the drop-down menus. One last cool thing you can do, and I'm going to reset everything back to how it was. So I've got a blank canvas, nothing, just a draw tool, and we'll start with uh, a white circle. Okay, one last thing you can do, and it's really fun, is, here we go, editing while animating. So we've got our this white circle, and let's select the eraser tool and use a small circle. Okay, let's copy and paste. I'm just using Control c and Control v to copy and paste a bunch. So we've got 12 frames of this uh, white circle, and then I'm just going to hit play, and it's going to loop through at 5 frames per second. Um, let's actually increase that to 10 per second. Actually, 12 a second. There we go. So it's going to go take one second to loop through all of these frames. You get to edit while animating. So while this is looping through its stuff, I'm still allowed to do things. So let's just kind of erase some stuff. There we go. So I just used the eraser tool while it was animating through them. And there we go. Um, there are some cool effects people have used uh, doing this technique, like making fire. Um, I can also add some more stuff. This actually works really well with layers if you don't want to be too destructive. Um, actually, this is creepy. Let's look one to one. Looks like bugs crawling around. That is some scary stuff. But yeah, I can pick something else, make a new layer. Uh, let's pick a nice small one and then just kind of uh, throw some red in down here. I don't know why. So yeah, anyway, it's just to point out that you can uh, edit your images while it's <laughs> looping through them and animating, um, if that helps you. And that concludes this tutorial. It was a long one, but there's a lot to cover with the image editor. Uh, you now understand this film strip and how to change your speed, uh, how to look around, how to manipulate your brushes, your colors, how to import colors from other sprites, uh, what the left and right click do, all the different tools, and how to create new layers. And um, that's pretty much it. So thanks for learning. Mm -hmm.